A Stuart 10H steam engine build, part 10. Cleaning the rusty cylinder bolts and fitting the end cover. Making a gasket for the other end between the cylinder and the cover with the gland. Using a small bench mounted rotary grinder to finish the hole in the centre of the gasket. Here's a cylinder with the cover sat on the gasket ready to be fitted. First of all though I need to clean up all these 7BA bolts because they are very rusty. And to do this I will be using my bench mounted Proxon motor tool fitted with a rotary scouring tool. Why is there a red cross warning before this section? Well it's quite simple, don't hold the bolts in your hand. They're too small and in no time at all this one disappeared across the workshop. When I moved the bolt to the back of the rotary scourer to get a better camera angle it was suddenly catapulted across the workshop and I couldn't find it. There is a much better way to do this. You can either screw the bolt into a fitting that you make, a threaded piece of bar would do, or you can just hold it with a pair of pliers like this. Obviously you do have to keep repositioning the bolt in the small pair of pliers, but it's not a problem. It just stops it flying across the workshop, never to be seen again. These rotary scourers have a bit of a problem. All the time the shedding, the nylon scouring material, and it goes all over the bench. The secret is to run them slowly. Here, this one is going too fast, and it didn't last hardly any time at all. They come in three different colours, like a light straw colour, a red colour and a green colour, and I do believe that this denotes the grade of the scourer. Some are rougher than others. If you run them too fast like I'm doing here, in no time at all a groove wears in the middle, and then the whole thing doesn't look too good. You have to change it for another one, which isn't a big problem, they're very cheap. But if you run them at a slower speed, they do last a good bit longer, and they still scour the parts and make them shiny. As I've just mentioned, they are shedding the material all the time, so it's a good idea to wear a breathing mask when using these, and eye protection. Here I'm using a green one, and it's definitely different, but the same thing's happening. I'm running at too high a speed, and it wears out prematurely. Normally I get much better results with these, running them slowly. If you run them fast, they will look like this in no time at all, and they don't scour quite so well when they do look like this. In a very short time I'd cleaned up all six of the bolts, and here I'm bolting the cylinder cover to the cylinder. In this clip you can clearly see the gap between the cylinder cover and the cylinder. That's because there's a gasket in between the two parts, and it's a bit small and you can't see it. I'd previously cleaned up the cylinder cover in the lathe, and now the bolts are also clean, it looks pretty good. I need to make another gasket for the other cylinder cover, and the simplest thing to do was to draw around the original gasket that's now fitted between the end cover and the cylinder. On this cylinder cover that bolts to the main sole plate, there are only four bolts used, so we'll need to transfer this from the cylinder cover. But first of all, I need to cut out the centre of the gasket, but not with this Stanley knife blade, which is very blunt. I have some surgical scalpels, the ones where the blade clips into a holder. If when you're cutting something out, which is not a living organism, they can snap quite easily, and they're very springy, and fly a long way around the workshop, and occasionally I've been hit in the face with them. No great injury, but that's not the point, I don't like them. Even though a Stanley knife is big and cumbersome, with a new blade, it's very easy to manipulate to cut the hole. Once I cut the centre hole, I cleaned it up using a grinder that by coincidence was exactly the right size that I needed, and it gave a near perfect finish to the inside part of the gasket. I don't know where this grinder came from, I have a box full of various rotary tools for my Proxon motor tools. Normally I used drum sanders for this job, but I couldn't find the one I was looking for, so I thought this one should be alright, and it was. To get the whole spacings, I did it like this. Very, very simple. Use a pencil. The cylinder cover is automatically held in the right place by the central register sitting in the gasket hole. Then it's over to my small bench drilling machine. 
and it's quite easy to drill on the spots you've made with the pencil. A lot of model engineering jobs, in fact a lot of full-size engineering jobs, can be simplified. You don't have to use rotary tables, you don't have to use DROs, you can just use a pencil spot and learn how to drill the hole on the spot. The thing about using marks, if the marks look right, provided you drill the hole on the marks, then the end product will be right. Using a pencil is actually a better idea than a felt-tip pen because felt-tip pen ink soaks into the gasket and can give you a false reading. A pencil just makes a spot without any fuss. The problem with drilled holes in gaskets is they are a bit rough. It's very important to remove any burrs using some wet or dry sandpaper before using the gasket. In the next episode I'll be making some studs for the end of the cylinder and enlarging the holes in the cylinder cover because they're very tight. Sometimes a bit of clearance is a useful thing. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.